struggle to get your bird to get back in their cage or even to put them in their cage, well then this video is for you because I have a couple of different solutions for you so that you can do it with ease. back to the channel, my poodle and parrot pals, and if you're new here, welcome! I hope that you are all having a colossum day. Sandra and Mia here, and I'm mummy to Lambo and the M&Ms, Mango and Mia. If you're a parrot or dog lover, then you've come to the perfect place where I share dog tips, parrot tricks, and dang, a lot of cuteness. So I get this question a lot. How do I get my bird into their cage? And how do I train them? Now, I also get asked a lot what to do about bird biting. So a video on that topic is coming soon. And I promise that the next video is going to be a Lambo video so we can get some doggy footage out here because he is so cute. But before we jump into it, I really just wanna show off my new sweater. Look how cute. And the reason why this sweater is super extra cute is when my husband and I started dating, he actually got me a little Snoopy toy and little did we know that we would end up with a little dog and a bird. But for today's topic, let's jump into it. I'm going to share with you how you can train your bird to go into their cage willingly on their own without any hassle and fuss. Yes. The first tip that I'm going to give you today is to train your bird to step up. So step up training is when you give your bird your finger and they step up. When you train them to step up, then you can get them to step up on your finger and then put them from your hand into the cage and gently place them in there. And then you'll want to reward them for going into the cage. In the beginning, when you're doing this, you may want to offer a higher reward so that they know that they've done a good job by going into their cage. Now I reward Mia every single time she goes inside of the cage. In the beginning, I did use a higher value reward, which for her is walnuts. And now whenever she goes into the cage, she doesn't care which treat she gets. She just knows that for being a good girl, she's gotten a treat. And right now she's trying to get scratches. Who's a goody two claws? Who's a goody two claws? Another way to get your bird in their cage is the hands over back technique. So I also call this a C. Whenever I make a C position, Mia knows to get into the C and then she knows that I'm going to hold her lightly. So you never wanna squeeze your bird or hold them too tightly because that's going to be uncomfortable for them and they're not going to trust you. Now holding your bird in this type of position is going to take some training and trust building with your bird and it'll happen over time as you bond with them. But when it comes to any kind of training, you need to be consistent and persistent and practice makes perfect. Once you have your bird in your hands, you want to hold a hand lightly over the back and the wings, which will prevent your bird from raising their wings and flying away. This also takes some training before it is an action that your bird is going to accept. You can start by holding your hand over your bird and as this becomes more comfortable, lower your hand and do so for longer periods of time until you work up to holding your hand over your bird's back for the half a minute it will take to get them back into their cage. Always make sure that you're offering rewards for your bird whenever you are training. Now, if a stepping up or a holding your bird is not an option yet, or this is something that you're working towards, you can also get them to step up onto a stick or an extra perch that you have, and then get them to step up on the stick and put the stick into the cage and get them to step off into the cage using the stick. That way you're not using your hands, and if your bird is a little bit hesitant or tends to nip you, then this will help to avoid that issue. But tip number four, and this is my favorite one, and I recently discovered this and I love it. So I trained Mia to do this kind of by accident, but then when I realized what was going on, I started to be a lot more purposeful with it and with the training. 
So the fourth tip is to put a treat or some type of favorite food that your bird loves inside of their cage. But the key is to make sure that they can see it and they can see that you've put it in there. I've trained Mia to learn that when her foraging bowl in her cage is filled with toys, that means that if she forages through there, she's going to find a reward, AKA one of her favorite nuts on the bottom. And this can even be a small reward or a bigger reward in the beginning. So this is how it started. I got Mia these different foraging toys for rotating in her cage. And there's this one little basket that came with some paper veggies and paper balls. And you can also get little packs of like do it yourself materials to use to stuff in there or you can scrunch up the paper, just get creative or you can use leftover pieces of toys that they've destroyed. And so what I would do is I would put a nut in there and then I would put everything on top. And over time, whenever it was in her aviary during rotation, she learned that when that was full, she could forage and she would find something in there. And eventually it got to a point where when I'd be rotating her toys, I wouldn't take that toy out because I noticed that if she saw that it was full, she would go in there on her own to forage. And now if I wanna get her in there quicker because I'm in a rush or anything like that, then I just make sure that she sees that I've put a nut in there. I make sure that she's watching and then I fill up the basket and then I just wait. You step back, you wait, and your bird will go inside on their own. You don't have to use a foraging toy, but I find that it's really great and effective and it's fun for your bird. You could just put a treat somewhere in there for them where they're going to know or just make sure that they are able to see you putting the treat in there and the treat will lure them in. Speaking of treats, another great thing that might lure your bird into their cage is when they notice that there's been new toys put in there or you've switched up their toys. A lot of the times when I'm changing up Mia's cage and rotating her toys, when it's a fresh new set, she goes in there on her own like an eager beaver because she's so excited to explore all her new toys. And my fifth tip for today is whenever you're trying to get your bird in their cage, just make sure that you lower your energy and stay calm. If you're in a rush and you're freaking out, your bird is going to freak out. So make sure that you stay calm because birds can really read our body language and they can sense the energy. Our small birds are flock animals. They're very observant of body language. And to your bird, a flock member that is acting distressed and moving erratically could signal mortal danger. Slow down, speak softly to your bird, and act as though you have all the time in the world to get your bird back into their cage and that there is no rush. If you change your behavior, it'll change your bird's behavior. So that's it for today, guys. We hope that you found this video helpful and that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Let us know if you have any other questions in the comments. Have the most horrific day and we'll see you in the next video.